Today, the speaker raised concern about my dress code, but he acknowledged that I dress smart, and uh, it was presidential look. But his issue was the neck was a bit lower than where it should be. I respect the ruling of the speaker. The speaker is a good man. His ruling is good because he was ruling based, based on the standing orders, which I agree with it because it made sense because he was ruling by the standing order. However, we have a problem in Africa that we must look and dress like a white man to, for you to be parliamentary or for you to look like you, you, you are dressed properly. Uh, you know, wondering why necktie has to be part and parcel of our dress code and that's to be a mandatory in our standing order that you should put on a necktie. And uh, necktie is foreign. Necktie is a British, it was brought by British under the British attire. And we have been forced down our throats to, to dress British and to, to, to adhere by the rules of the Commonwealth Parliament. But we have brave countries like Ghana. We defy the order and dress in the African and Ghanaian attire. And they are looking very smart and they are looking very good. We have South Africa, which are, they have changed their standing order and they are looking nice and they are dressing in, 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 a, in a more casual manner. We have a countries like India, which was still colonized by the same British, and they are under the same Commonwealth, but they go to their parliament with Kikoi, and they look nice in their Indian clothes. We must reawaken the spirit of Kwame Ngrumah, the spirit of Thomas Sankara, the spirit of Patrice Lumumba, the spirit of Robert Subukwe, the, the spirit of Comrade Bob Mugabe, the spirit of Oliver Tambo, and those great giants of, of, of Africa who who wanted Africa to be liberated from the land, from ownership of the land to the capital, to the even dressing code. We don't have to dress like a Mzungu for you to be parliamentary dressed. We have to look into our standing order in future and make sure that the matters of wig and neckties, which are more Commonwealth, more, more British, more, you know, it's colonialist, it's imperialist upon us. And we have to, to be allowed to be able to fight for Africa, to fight for Africa, to be able to Africa. So, if you have a mambo ya necktie mingi, you have a mambo ya wig, you have a 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 wig, Na hizi zetu zingine za Kiafrika sinashonwa hapa Afrika zinakataliwa ziko parliamentary lakini tunapata kuli ile drop ya speaker inaenda kutengenezwa kule United Kingdom ya nini tusivai kwa kimila na desturi yetu mimi leo nimefanya nguo ambayo nime promote fundi hapa Kenya nime promote fundi wetu hapa locally ili aweze kupata amepata siku ya leo hiyo fundi amepata risk ya mtoto yake risk ya familia yake lakini naambiwa kidogo haiko parliamentary mbona na ile nguo zingine matai zimevaliwa bunge worth almost uh, ukifanya worthy wa bunge wote hapa ndani ya bunge ni kama bilio, karibu 1200 ama milioni 200 ama 300 ambayo wamefaa hapa na hiyo pesa hiyo nguo zote zinatoka taki zingine zinatoka Italy ili tuweze na tunaweza kukuza uchumi ya Italy na ya taki na tunatoa nguo kule taki na uh, wanatoa nguo kule taki na kule Italy wanavaa nguo designer suit hapa milioni kama 500 ukiaza bigger average look ya wabunge kwa siku moja kwa kwa, 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 kwa sitting moja kule bungeni lakini tukifanya ki Africa tunataka kufanya kujaribu kukuza na kuendeleza uchumi ya Afrika na hapa Kenya tunaambiwa it is not parliamentary na I'm dressed according to you know, in Pan-African spirit of Kenneth Kaunda of Zambia and the rest and Mze Nyerere, the great men of Africa, William Ruto, those who look smart and sharp in Kaunda suit. You know, there's no, there's not much deal. Ni ile tu tumekuwa na tasubi na tukwa na ile na ito ukoloni mamboleo. Nataka tuambie hii bunge yetu yeshimu nguo za kikenya, design za kikenya, tujenge kenya, tujenge uchumi yetu.